Hey guys! We got another uh, Megaville video for you here, and this one's gonna be fun. It's decor time! We don't have no 3D background in this one, so I'm gonna have to really try hard not to screw it up. All right, so first things first, I'm really glad that we have this canopy. Like I mentioned before, I can actually take all of these panels off by myself, and that is exactly what I'll be doing. I'm gonna slide this fixture back and uh, maybe I'll take these twisty ties off finally and slide this fixture forward. The other thing I'm gonna do as soon as I'm done with this twist tie is put a hat on so I don't have to do this whole thing with my hair in my face. <sighs> Get out of my face, hair. Ha! So first thing I'm gonna stick in before we get started is substrates. I'm not planning to use any big heavy rocks or anything, so I'm not putting any kind of lattice down on the bottom of the tank to protect it. Uh, quite frankly, everything that's going in here is going to be relatively light by comparison to uh, other projects I've done. So let's start with substrate. I'm using uh, my all time favorite. It is the Carib C Sunset Gold Sand. Sand? Thomas, really sand? Don't you always say how sand is hard to take care of and stuff? Yeah, I know. I'm aware. This is not about, uh, you know, practicality necessarily so much as it is about trying to emulate the environment that I want to emulate. I also thought it might be really cool in this discus tank if I put like a really nice big group of, I don't know, Sturbay Cory catfish or something like that. And they like sand. And uh, yeah. When I look at pictures of a lot of black water tanks, uh, sand seems to be one of the things that really makes everything look awesome. So I'm just going for effect here. So I don't really need a whole lot of sand because I'm not planting in it or anything, or at least I'm not planning to, especially because it's an inert substrate. Uh, but I do want to try to grade it a little bit. So I want more sand on that back side of the tank there kind of with a taper down to what I'm gonna call the front of where you're looking through the tank. Yeah, another bag. Whoa. Here we go. Oh, yeah. So for the main hardscape, I'm thinking of going driftwood. Uh, I had essentially planned to use driftwood basically this entire time and just never told you. Um, so I have a ton of driftwood here. I made sure I got a really good selection sent over just so I could kind of play with it. So originally I thought I would go with Malaysian driftwood, but the big large uh, XL pieces that I wanted to get my hands on were unavailable at the time. So I kind of had to rework um, my thought process and I'm going with uh, the underwater treasures uh, style of driftwood. This is actually the reptile treasures version like I used on the 265. This way, there is no slate base. I can kind of just turn them around any which way I like. The tough part is I have to slow fill. If you remember, we did that. That way they can kind of waterlog as I fill the tank up. Makes the filling process uh, slow and arduous. However, um, at least my aquascape won't float away. So now the question is, how do I get, and how much of this wood do I need to get in here to create a substantial structure on this side of the aquarium tapering off to this side. It's a mystery. I'm just gonna start throwing things in and see how it goes. Oh, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Ooh. see you there. Okay, so after fussing with a whole whack load of driftwood, I have kind of come up with something that I like. Sort of. Um, anytime I'm, I'm working with driftwood and stuff like that, uh, I have in my mind a kind of an idea of what I would like to have happen. Uh, my original design for the tank was completely unattainable by the fact that I had to use a completely, completely different type of wood. So I've kind of had to reformulate what I think I'm going to do with the tank. 
and I am pretty happy with what I've got so far. So the hardscape so far consists of two structures made out of several pieces of driftwood. This is to uh, provide some cover for the discus and other fish in the tank, as well as give me kind of a surface for those uh, rhizome plants and mosses that I intend to put in this tank um, to kind of create that live planted jungly look. Uh, I'm, I'm intending still to keep the sand completely free and open of any kind of plants and uh, have a mixture of what's probably going to be Anubias and mosses and uh, maybe some java ferns, etc. Uh, across the driftwood. I wanted the driftwood to come up fairly high so I had uh, you know, a nice platform to hold those plants up, which would create shade and shelter below so the fish could feel secluded if they needed to. Um, I've got a nice space in the center here with branches that kind of overreach that gap. Uh, not only does it add a little bit of negative space, so it's not just a huge pile of driftwood, but also um, gives a little bit of an enclosed area for those discus to kind of hide in between the two structures or uh, gives them also a path to travel between the two structures if you've ever seen fish kind of uh, darting between one uh, type of cover to another cover or one structure to another structure. They usually pick a path similar to that uh, where they still feel contained and protected, but is a direct route to another uh, body of uh, wood or another type of structure. So this is the kind of stuff I think about while I'm doing this, just to try to imagine how this is going to go, how the fish are gonna be able to uh, utilize it. I think the next step now is to add some uh, river stones. They're smooth, kind of semi-polished uh, round rocks like you would expect to see it on a riverbed or next to a river. Um, I'm gonna be kind of tucking those in and around the structures here just to add a certain je ne sais quoi. So now with all those rocks in, it's slowly starting to come together. Uh, I've also got a selection of uh, tannin pods, jungle junk, nut pods, shells of jungle tree nuts, basically, that can add tannins to the water. They're likely going to float until I soak them. So there's really no point in putting them in just now. I might throw them in there just so you can get a feel for it. I'm also going to be throwing in some magnolia leaves um, and probably some alder cones and some other things just to you know, add to the bottom. There should be a leaf litter on the bottom, which is why I've got the magnolia leaves and some other things that maybe fell in to their habitat that colors the water that nice tea color. I think I'm happy with this. I never know. I might change it. The next time you see it, it might be a little bit different. I might add some more substantial rock. I might keep it this way. It's hard to visualize exactly how it's gonna turn out because once you get all the plants in there, and all the leaf litter and all the rest of the jungle junk and stuff to create that black water environment. Um, it, it's gonna change already so much from what we see here. So this is only a starting point, if you will. So uh, if you have any questions, drop those down in the comment section below. If you'd like to reach out to us on Facebook, we've got that too. Social media is a wonderful thing or the worst thing, who knows? And if you haven't already, please subscribe so you can see how this beautiful build turns out. The next build that's coming up also, we've got the high-tech planet tank, the low-tech planet tank. We've got all kinds of fun stuff here for you. All kinds of hot tips and tricks and ways to take care of your tank so everything's happy and smiling. So it can keep on tanking. <sighs> so nice to see it finally coming along. Mm. <sighs> Almost done.